Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 24th of October. This is the last week of October. And what we are looking at here is that the Dow is up 209 to 31,292. It had a big spike, a gap up spike into leg C. It hit the Chapman wave inside wedge target resistance line. And it's now pulling back a little bit. 31,570 was the high. It's down, uh, it's 270 from that high. It's at five, at 31,303. And uh, the MACD's strong stochastic great at 85%. That on balance volume still doesn't want to get going. And that's just a, a, a signal to me to say, this is a very selective rally at this particular point. It's not one of those great takeoffs where the market explodes to the upside and just has power after power with the entire, the, the, the Dow, the S&P, the NDX 100, the QQQs, that is, and the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, just pushing ahead, trying to chase one another to see who could be the leader. Nah, not that at all. It's very selective. We've chosen the Dow to be selective. We did we did choose the position in the Qs this morning, and um, it, it got taken out very quickly, very tiny percentage loss, but at the same time, uh, more than made up for on the upside with what's working. But that's not the issue. The issue is for the for the Q. We'll get to get there. So let's just go S and P. Also the same thing. Very nice move to the upside. Now pulling back towards the low of the day after the gap up, gapped up, opened 37.62. It's trading at 37.62 right now, up nine. It went all the way to 37.96. I mean that's uh, 36 points higher. Very quick moves. Gee, I wonder if I could just do that quickly. And let me do this because we want to get to. The SMHs. Yeah, so that was a peak C failure in the one minute chart. I think that the 120, considering that the rally started way early this morning, yes, it went to that peak D with a long legged doji candle. And now we are underneath the doji support level. And this, this horizontal line that I drew that goes way back to about the 18th or so of uh, last month. Yeah, so we are actually uh, pulling back. We're now only up 250 in the E-mini S&P in the 10-minute chart. And that says, watch out, 37.45 is the 200-period moving average that was support earlier on and lower down uh, on the turnaround at 5 o'clock. And uh, then it went to a buy signal to a buy mode with a cup formation. But you can see the vertical. I love to do this. Uh, this is what I teach all the time. When I'm, I'm showing, I'm doing my courses. Look, the left side peak C was way stronger technically than the right side peak D, and now you can see the results. You're starting to pull back. All right, let's get back to our story here. So we're talking about uh, the S and P. Now we can get to the QQQ. The QQQ, which is one, two, three, is the NDX 100 trading vehicle, Invesco QQQ Trust Series. And what we're looking at is it didn't make it made by a penny I think yep about a penny or two a high going to a leg C with the stochastic way down at 57 percent and the MACD good and the stochastic looked as if today was the day that it was going to attempt to cross sorry I said stochastic I meant the nine period pink nine period moving average in the daily was about to cross positive and that would be a huge thing for the first time you would see the QQQs crossing positive since they broke down back on that huge decline that day of the 26th of August, um, 321 was the high, 307 was the low, mm -mm. 334 was the August high, and we plunged down to the 254s. So this is a, a kind of, I'm going to be polite, I'm going to say it's a pathetic uh, rally failure right now, and we're looking at the SMHs, I must include them, because they are really very much part of the QQQ, did make a higher high today, in leg B, actually they're holding... <laughs> A tad, if you can say it's a tad better, just a tad better because this is the first time in a while that you've got one, two, three, four, five, six um, bars rally early in September going to peak A. This has gone to one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh bar. 
And I, I, it's not great, but it's holding a little bit better. Wow, that weekly chart is terrible and the monthly is terrible. So I wanted to give it a chance today to say, hey, you know what? Rather than choose individual stocks, just at this particular point, I'm not yet 100% comfortable. We do have individual stocks that have done really well. Um, but at this particular point, I want to be as selective as possible, putting cash to work in a very selective way. So here we are in the uh, index down three at 183.30. If you go to the IWM, unfortunately, there wasn't any leadership there. It's now not a good chart pattern at all. It's the second, it's the lowercase h that goes to a second little arch right here. And let's see if we can change that from an arch to a cup formation. But at this particular point, it's stuck in a rectangle basically between 170, let's call it 76. And even on the downside, you don't have to go down to the 163 level. You can go down to 168. It's just stuck in this range for now. It needs to break out on the upside decisively if it's going to help the weekly chart. Otherwise, that becomes terrible for the IWM. Okay, let's go to gold. Uh, gold is down three and a half at 16.53. It's just not a great chart pattern at all, either in the daily, the weekly, or the monthly. It had a fabulous rally, broke out of the resistance levels, even the 50-period moving average back in early October, screamed up to the 17.35 area, 36. And now look at this. It's at 16.52 and struggling. MACD's not very good. Stochastic still uh, very low at 14%. The 9 is under the 14-period moving average, pink in the daily. And you can repeat the same thing. In the weekly, although the histogram is starting to improve a little bit, meaning the MACD is just improving a tad and the monthly looks very poor. So gold is going to have to really reflect uh, the dollar's weakness. If it does start to pull back sharply, we'll get to the dollar in a moment. But as I said, silver is uh, a much better chart formation than gold, but it's still not doing great. It is up 19.01 uh, uh, today at 19.09. And the weekly chart just says, ah, stuck until you're trading. Hey, wake me up when you're trading in the 22s. But uh, we'd like to, if it's going to move up high, get get the position so that it can, you can use the rally to best benefit high-grade copper. High-grade copper is right at the two, uh, Chapman Wave inside track. Repellent zone got repelled again at 3.44. Uh, down 0.03, did hit 3.5, but it couldn't hold there. So the moment you start trading at 3.53, that's a nice turnaround in the daily chart. The weekly chart will need a lot more. Let's go to the, did I do the dollar? Yes, the dollar is up uh, 31 ticks at 112.32. It is fighting between the arch formation or the cup formation. And I said that the left side test was on weaker technicals. But we'll have to wait. Just wait. I think that the dollar is in a consolidation phase. Wait a minute. If you look at the USD JPY, <laughs> this is the yen. This is the dollar yen currency pair. We got a peak D, a leg D on Friday. Uh, it's actually an alternate account, but I'm calling it a D for now. And this is a fabulous turnaround intra, overnight intraday. And it's still a leg E in the monthly chart. So it's actually holding very well considering that the MACD is about to cross negative of the stochastics at 82% pulling back. But so far, the 9 is way above the 14. You remember how important I said it is? 9 is the leader. The 9, if the 9 period moving average is holding above the 14, it's really important. Look at the EUR with the euro trying to rally up within a range. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Titan Conditions Hour. Dow's up 246. S&P's up 11. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. A couple of questions came in. Let me just quickly do this before I go to XLE Baba. We spoke about the other day. Um, someone had uh, um, sent me email saying, I think it was uh, GT saying, saying that... Um, uh, uh, put positions on Baba, and I said, "Well, that you know, this is that, that whole Chinese area. Just uh, it's so weak. The FXI is weak, which is the China big cap uh, ETF. And now look at this. Baba's down 17 percent, down 12 at 59.86. Great call, a GT on the on the. I, I don't know if you actually had the puts, but you were mentioning the puts. Uh, yeah, this is. I mean, wow." That's amazing. All right, so I, I'd just be, I'd avoid the Chinese area. Why? I don't, we have enough problems. Why would you step into a country that is guaranteed to give you problems? Just so, yes, a, a short side, fine, uh, great. You know what you're doing there. That's that's not a problem at all. But I am saying that uh, buying, a, certainly on the long side, anything in China at this particular point, uh, it's just hazardous to your to your health and your wealth. So looking at um, XLE, so the XLE today is acting very well. It's up 40, 51 cents at 87.44. There is this W formation that's making a one cup formation that kind of failed at the previous half, 93.31, uh, the 8th of June, uh, plummets down to the 65-ish area, then rallies to the 84s at peak D, uh, so D, I, I never like a peak D underneath the previous high. The previous high, I want to see taken out in leg C. That's really positive. Fading underneath, it says, you know, even even when you, unless you're taking off from a major, major low, obviously, if you're going to higher highs and higher highs and higher highs, you're going to get to a D and then you're going to even recycle and get to another D. But if you're already in progress, and it's not directly market related, then fading at a peak D says to me, just be careful. Well, in fact, it went from the 84s down to the low that was made at about 6680 or something, if I remember correctly, uh, 6866. And look what happened. It goes to peak A, peak B, peak C, leg D, and the Chapman wave. Now, I'm, I haven't done this. I'm, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I have to move this to the right. I've taken this peak D here as the midpoint, but actually I like to be a little conservative. I like to be, um, I like to look at it as if to say, 
Are, is there a particular candle that you can use? Because visually, just I'm this is not mathematically anything. I'm just saying visually. Well, I guess it is mathematical. I'm saying visually, it doesn't look like uh, like it can get there shorter. It can get there longer. But I want you to put a, at least where I've got the Chapman Wave Inside Track uh, repellent zone. I'd like to see if that can join up. But sometimes you have to use the bars as your your benchmark. Other times you have to use either candles or your, a new Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line. But if I just join these as they are right now, it takes me to about uh, the sec. It takes me about to the second week of November to get to the 93s. It's an 87. So five points these days is not that big for the XLE, but that's what I'm looking at. However, at leg D, MACD is good, nine periods over the 14 period, moving average, stochastics, fabulous at 92%. On balance, is volume a little, a, a vo on balance, volume is lagging a little. So my suspicion is we've got a little bit of a pullback coming, and then we'll see if we can get to 89, 50, 90.30 in this by about Wednesday or Thursday, that's going to say, uh-oh, acceleration up, targeting the 90 to 93 area. But if it starts to stall and pulls back, it's at 87.96 right now, 87.04, oh, I'm sorry, 87.04. Oh, if it pulls back to the 80, under 86.30 in the next day or two, it says it's going to stall out a little bit. So the question was, uh, cheers, Basil, uh, cheers, Ron. Uh, what's your take on the XLE? And my take is the XLE is in a buy mode in the daily, a buy mode in the weekly, and a buy mode in the monthly. And that this is, I would say that any serious pullback is a buying opportunity. And I'd have a wider, so I always put in a stop, but I'd make it a wider stop to give it some room because the bias is to complete this rectangle with one cup, now in a second cup in the weekly chart, attempting to get towards or to the uh, peak D that was made right here, the week of the 10th of June at 93.31. And that'll probably, if it goes to 93.32, go to a leg F in the monthly chart. The monthly chart has a huge cup, a bowl formation with a 99.73 high back in June of 2014. And uh, you can see that there's, uh, where does that go to? That goes to there. That takes you to the last week of December, the first week of January, for which uh, that 99.73 area would become a target. But uh, let's go step by step. Next question came in. Uh, just a, 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 let's see, a baseball says, uh, Exxon, come fly with me. Come fly with me. That's fine. Okay, 105.79. Down seventy cent, down seven cents with a Doji candle in leg E. MACD strong stochastics very good at ninety three. On balance volumes a little overbought, and it's in a leg D in the weekly. And I'm suggesting that Exxon has been a kind of a leader, beautiful capital gains plus dividend, and it might start to stall here in this particular pattern. Stalling is different to having it short. I would not touch any of the oils as short. Uh, unless it's just a very, you know, unless you, you've got terrific signals that say, you know what, it could pull, could pull back very sharply right here. I'm getting in, I'm getting out, and then I, I'll wait to see if maybe I buy it again. But this is acting very well at this particular point. Let's do CVX because they go together. And CVX is in leg D as well. It's under its previous high of 182.40. It's at 172.58, down 63 cents today. And all I can say is, uh, let's look at the monthly chart. Yeah, I think it's also going to retackle that previous high uh, back in the um, Chevron multinational oil uh, back at what 182.40. So it's acting very well. It's above its resistance line in this little trend in this little Chapman Wave inside track repellent. Now it's not yet a propellant zone, but it's certainly above it, and that's important. All right, so we've got the oils. Let's just go back to crude oil right now. Then I want to look at, yep, crude oil is uh, now, uh, it's about unchanged. Look at natural gas. Natural gas has a nice candle today. First green candle in about uh, seven sessions. 
Now, the big thing is this. Uh, so we had a, a discussion the other day about the um, weekly chart of uh, NG, natural gas continuous contract. And I said, yeah, I could make a case for um, a Chapman Wave unconventional flat base restart. It's very unusual, and that could have gone to a D. But that's kind of – I don't like to stretch a technique. If you, you, know, if you start to modify and, and – uh, uh, formulate or reformulate your criteria, what have you got? You've got nothing. So all I can say is having a look at this pattern, it's more like the Groucho Marx. If anybody know Groucho Marx, I actually didn't particularly like Groucho Marx. I didn't think it was all that funny, but maybe he was. I just didn't watch it that much. This is the Groucho Marx eyebrows. He had these thick eyebrows. He was a comedian, uh, the Marx brothers, three brothers. I, uh, I don't like slapstick too much. Anyway, this is I call the Groucho Marx eyebrows pattern. It's like a V-shaped pattern, and then it comes down. It comes down usually not as sharply, but if it comes down this sharply, it says you almost have to restart a buy signal to buy mode, and that might be happening right here. We'll get back to it as soon as I return. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Yes. So, um, XOP is the SP oil and gas exploration. You can see from this peak E, it's kind of stuck in the middle of the range. It's got a big rectangle formation. That's the monthly chart right, right here. I usually just grab the outer limits. And I'll show you, there's the, there's the rectangle. If it starts to make higher highs and higher lows, it can get to just on, just under, or just above the previous high, major high that is. That's the high of June of 2022 at 170.62. I'm going to right type that in because I'll be asked that again, 170.62. 
And it's then it's forming a cup formation. It hasn't done it yet. It needs a little bit high. It needs to go to a leg C in the weekly charts with the W formation. Those W formations are really good, but they also tell you that this issue is stuck in a range. You can go to the upper range. You've got to be careful. It comes down maybe to the middle of the, of the range again. And it's a peak C in the daily chart. So this is acting very well. This is S&P Oil and Gas Exploration Fund. So in that particular uh, regard, yes, SLB was a question I had on Friday. Whoa, look at this. 51.09 up 67 again today. Uh, a nice move. So this is AB. This is a leg C. Uh, and, and what's happened is this has gone from the 33s to 51 uh, since the end of September. A really quick move in, uh, this, of this magnitude. And I like this very much as Slumberger. And it's gone above the left side high, a peak F top that was made way back in June or May. June, I think. Yeah, June, the week of the 10th, 49.83. has a little bit of a pullback, goes down to 30.65. Oh, man. And now it's back again. In fact, it's above and it's in leg F in the monthly chart. So these oil, the, 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 uh, let me just see, did I ever type that in? I must have done this. I couldn't even tell you uh, in uh, over 30 years or so how many times I've done the notation for Schlumberger. Oh, it's even more. Um, anyway, it's at 51. Monthly chart just making very nice uh, s single legs to the upside and it pulls back. Then a single leg to the upside and pulls back. E and then I'll say three months actually of, of consolidation and it's in a leg F. It's either a brand new B or an old F, but it's acting very well. Slumberger, SLB is the symbol. Uh, next question came in, and that was, I just always said in um, Twitter, Twitter, that is in uh, Tiger YouTube. Yeah, that's a double topish pattern, and it says that Twitter, uh, what, uh, what did it say, Twitter? Uh, uh, there it is. Okay, Twitter, 51.35 plus 2.87%. Sales supposed to close Friday at 54. Okay, well, you know what the number is. Meantime, back at the ranch, I'll just call this an F. It should go higher because 54 is the number, so it should go a tad higher. Maybe there's an alternate count. I've got it as an F, but it could be an F slash C. I'll put an F slash C, why not? Okay, and the weekly chart, this is A, this is B, pulls back, and now there's another one, A, B, C. So this is already a C. And we'll see what happens there. So Twitter is, eh, there's nothing to talk about. It's, uh, you know, if it's about to be bought, it's about to be bought. Uh, then, uh, so let's see. Yeah, I just want to look at the VIX index. Remember the VIX index? I was saying, if, where did I type that? Oh, oh, S&P, you're just about to tease me, right? Oh, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, VIX index right now. Yeah, look at the monthly, the weekly chart. It's underneath the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. The uh, There's an arch formation in the daily. I'm watching it closely because, yes, at any point it could be. It's, it's holding very well up in the 30 range, 30.51. But I think that uh, if this market continues with the kind of strength, select strength, but strength nevertheless, that I'm looking at, after all, look at the SLX. Let's see what the SLX is doing today. It's, yeah, made a peak C right at the 200. Uh, this is the, the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Nice that it's rallying. It's not great, but it's rallying. And it's gone from the 46-ish area to uh, 54, the uh, 200 period moving average. Little pullback today. That's all very important. Uh, so that, to me, is a, a good sign. And, okay, here I am. I'm going to look at I'm closing my eyes. I'm just hitting the keys. Open the eyes. Oh, shop is down. All right, 28.05 is down $1.70. Yeah, this is one that we, we had. Finally, we waited and waited and waited, and we got it. We got stopped out, and then it had a spectacular bounce on Thursday. And we acted quite well on Friday with the Chapman Wave uh, Roman Candle. Today, it took out, I, I think I spoke about this on Friday, didn't I? I remember this well. Well, either I was looking at it, but I, I think, yes, I think I said if it closes at any point on the in the next session, if it Holes under 28, I think I said 28.60. Either I was looking at it or I mentioned it. 28.60 is a good chance to retest the low. 
and it did that today. It went to 2783. You see, that's the reason why for subscribers I said, I'm not ready for ARKK. There's something wrong in this particular rally. I wouldn't say wrong. There's something different about this rally in that this time, the stocks that are involved in ARK Innovations, as Kathy Wood, it's her uh, ETF uh, that she runs, there's something wrong this time, and that it will play catch up at a certain point, but it is really lagging very badly, and it's telling me how about the selectivity of this particular move. So that's the reason why I said we'll go into the variation of the QQQ, because that also has the S, S uh, the semiconductors, which acted okay on Friday, and today they are acting very poorly. Look, this is the S semiconductors. And not a great pattern at all. Leg B with such a tiny move, and the technicals are trying to improve, yet they can't do anything. As I said, this is a very look. Now the Dow's back to up to 77, S&P is up 16. The Dow is up 0.9%. I've been saying all the time that is the mix. Uh, A V A A V E O, uh, A V E O. Yep. Yeah. Remember, it's. A, AVO Pharmaceuticals. There's a, a takeover offer. I think it is. I don't. I don't know when. It, how. How far the offer has gone, or whether it's being accepted or not. But look, it stays in this range, and it can stay in this range for a long time. I wish I could remember the stock that I I had, which just looked exactly like this, and it stayed in this range for weeks. I, I, percentage wise, it looks like it's just horizontal. It looks like it's. Um, it's going nowhere. But actually, on a percentage basis, if you were trading this on a 10-minute chart, that's something altogether. Look, 10-minute chart. Let's go to A, V, E, O, and you'll see nothing. <laughs> yeah, but percentage-wise, 1478 to 1475. Yeah, I, I, it's not even worth... It's not doing the job, okay? It's just waiting and waiting to see if the, if, it, if there is another offer. If there's another offer, you'll suddenly see a gap up, and then it'll hold in the nap. Then it'll be in play. At this particular point, it's, the person is asking Dan. He's done fantastically with it. Now I think he's just holding a, a call position. Um, now that I'm AVO, has been, oh, it's actually been bought out. Oh, it's done. All right. So, that, all right, we're off. Um, so that's that. BTAI, BTAI. AI, BTA, oh, I didn't mean to do that there, ESZ22, this is the, uh, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, at the 200 period moving average in the E-mini, that's, the, I, it's, I made a mistake, I used that chart, so I'm getting right now, to BTAI, BTAI. Um, yeah, this is starting to turn around. Yeah, 11.05 up 26 cents up 2.41 percent. This is Bio Excel. Oh, Bio Excel Therapeutics. Yes, this is the kind of pattern that you, if you follow it, what you need to see the pink nine period moving average has to cross positive, and that'll only happen when it gets to about 11.53. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 2.53. Basil Chapman, Tiger, Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right. Whoops, sorry, that was capitals by mistake. Uh, Alan, I saw, you know, I, you, I have the capitals on all the time because I'm notating Chapman Wave methodology, uppercase, uh, high, uh, uppercase for the way up and lowercase for the way down. Uh, so the question came in, is there another vehicle uh, f uh, to trade UNG, natural gas, rather than, yes, I saw not a vehicle, but I saw a stock that just seemed to mirror very well. I just, I wrote it down somewhere. I'll try to find it. If I can, I'll let you know tomorrow, um, Alan. So, yeah. Um, so within the question, the question that came in was, XOM and CVX have earnings on, uh, on oops, <laughs> didn't mean that. Uh, have earnings on Friday. So the question is, Basil, XOM and CVX report Friday. I've had a nice run. Do you hold the position since your outlook on the XLE is very bullish? Well, it's bullish because of all the things that are going on geopolitically. Uh, so this is what I tend to, to uh, advise. First of all, XOM. Oh, did I type it in there again? Sorry, in the, sorry, the Dan, I didn't... Uh, you know, I don't think I would even want to mess with it. But what I will say is this. I, it could rally a little further this week. But just in terms of money management, because it's got a dividend, you don't want to mess around too much. I would just say, take a little bit off. I, I, what if it pulls back before then and then rallies and now you've taken it off and you could have got a much better price? Well, just in terms of money management, even if you go to the last two weeks or so, going from the 93 to 106, you know, 10, 12, 13 percent for a, a huge big cap stock like that, I would just say take a little bit off to make yourself comfortable. Uh, put it... Do that in relation to the dividend. What is? I, I'm not sure if I can remember this correctly. Four point eight, four point. I think it's a very good dividend, but I would not. At this particular point, it's giving you no sign that says get out, get out, because um, I'm, I'm tumbling down. What it is saying is, under other conditions, the weekly chart is suggesting that it's kind of stretched. But even if it pulls back to the 96, 93 level that it was at the other day and then holds steady, all I'm saying is that 94, pulling back to 90, between 95 and 94, closing below that, says the rectangle formation, you could go down to the lower range. That's the 86 to 82 area. But I don't know if you want to mess around with it, one of the best stocks in this particular environment. So take a little bit off. Maybe take it in two take take it in two little pieces. Take it off now because it's just great. It's you know, or it's 
a multi-year high, not a multi-decade, but a multi-year high, and you t take a little bit off. And if for any reason it has a big spike up, you can take another little bit off, and you're sitting pretty. And then if it comes out on Friday and it's just a sell the news type thing, pulls back six or seven points, you've got money that's maybe one part of the two things that you took off, you put a little bit back. Now, I would do it very judiciously. I would not be uh, emotional about it. I'd say, money management says X, and I want to do that. It's got, it, it probably doesn't even have anything to do with sleeping better at night because this is on its way up, not on the way down, near highs rather than near lows. Yeah, I'd have a different perspective completely if it was else something else. Okay, next question came in, and where, where did it go? It, oh, um, here we go. So uh, someone said, I think it was on Friday when I, I was, um, I saw it after the show. Um, in Investors Business Daily, is there anything there that you like? Well, um, they've had stocks that they use their techniques for, but I've seen a lot of stocks just pull back incredibly. And they are in, they are in Investors Business Daily. It doesn't mean they belong to Investors Business Daily. This is like whether they top their 50 stocks or whatever it is. That's their rating. But what they did show uh, um, over the weekend, a bunch of stocks, and I'll do, for instance, I'd never heard of DV. DV is Double Verify Holdings. A digital advertiser. It's holding very nicely in this range, but it is a stock that was up in the 40, 47 area once upon a time in 2021. And it did have a little bit of a tumble to the teens. And now it's at 28. So I'm looking at stocks like this that have had a tremendous pullback or in digital advertising in an area that could improve at some point. But all I'm saying is that I'm looking at them and I'm saying, oh, this is tough. Then there, were, then, then there was a question about, where did I write that? Snow. So this is Snowflake Inc., global data platform. I uh, had a high of round number 429 back in December 2020. Pulled back to about 190 and then screws back up to 400 for the U-shaped pattern with terrible technicals. And then all of a sudden it plunges down to 110 uh, back in June of 2022. So now it's rallying, but it's making, so far it's making lower highs and lower lows. So this is something I'm monitoring because it's in the global data platform. They, they were fantastic stocks at one point, the whole bunch. Uh, another one was D-Dog. This is also data. Now this one, um, has sort of flattened out. It doesn't have that bounce, and it's got a left side, right side price time match. It's two weeks after that without breaking it in time, in price, but in time, it's it has done that from the low that was made back in April or May of 2021 uh, 20, at about the 60. I'll give you the price right here. It was May of uh, May, the week of the 7th, 2021, a low of 69.73. Screams up to 200, actually 199.68 in November, peak F, and then it comes down the Chapman wave. It was a left side, right side price time match, but then it didn't come down enough. So I extended it out and that's extended to last week. And yet the low of three weeks ago was one of 75.54, very close when you consider everything that's going on, but it still doesn't seem ready. And that's exactly what we saw in the, the, the QQQ today. Another one was uh, that was oh CFLT. Now this is a, this is a little bit different. CFLT. This is uh, Confluent Inc. Event Streaming Data Platform. It's at least going sideways. So it's trying to find a base. If the tech look, the MACD is improving. The nine is still under the fourteen, and it doesn't show any sign yet of crossing positive. Stochastics. A little better than it was back in June, but not much. It's it's formed the same arch pattern that you've got right here, but it's something I'm I'm following. Uh, event uh, streaming data platform. Another was MDB, which I'd never heard of before. Uh, this I didn't do it all the way because um, I just wanted to do the monthly. This is MongoDB uh, Inc. Man also, management document oriented info store or retrieve information, so all data, uh, data uh, platform. 
and it's got the A pattern, uh, Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down from the 590. Round number high, when these things make round number highs, you've got to be very aware that that's something, to, I'll talk about that in a moment, uh, Tesla. And look at this, it's come all the way. So these are just not ready for prime time. No, they're not even ready for uh, uh, anything just yet. But keep them in mind, because when this market eventually starts to turn, that data management, the ones that have held the best, should start to lead. Uh, Tesla, I'll do that right as we're going to the break. Tesla at around number 202 the other day was trading at 201.85. Took it out. I'll be back. Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're back, and we're looking at a question came in about on computer, on semiconductor corporation, intelligence sensing, data, and power solutions. Peak D in the monthly chart. It ran to a peak F slash A. It's one of those things. F is, be careful, A is fantastic. But I decided that I would just t show that the left side price movement back in January, I think it was, uh, yeah, January the 7th of 2022 at 70.26. And then the sharp pullback and then the rally that was made between July, August, probably about August or so uh, to the 75s. Uh, the technicals at that point were trying to rally but they were weaker than they were before, but the nine-period moving average was still very strong. Now the nine-period moving average in the weekly is just starting to weaken, but this uh, technically, uh, just on a, a performance basis, chart-wise, is a much better pattern than the ones that we were talking about before, like the D-Dogs, etc. So that's that, and it'll have res strong resistance in the 68-69 area. 
uh, a, a question came in. No, a statement. Queb. I haven't looked at Queb for a long time. I used to have it all notated. Probably a naked chart right now. Yep, naked chart. And it's gapped down huge. This is uh, the uh, crane, crane shares, CSI, China, something or other. China Internet. Isn't this the Internet? I'm pretty sure it's the Internet sector. Yes, the Internet. China. I internet ETF. Wow, 17.92. Just uh, beginning of September, it was in the 31s, almost cut in half. Yeah, this is this is this is you know, it's this is going to drag down our sectors as well. So let's just do this. We'll look at the VIX index and say that the VIX index is running a little bit. It's up 75 cents at 30.45. If by the end of the day, and it's going to take quite a little bit to do, if the QQQ starts to improve. And it's trading right now at 274.68. If it's able to, today's high is 277.27. If it's able to get to 275.80 by 1.30 this afternoon, I think it actually can rally a little bit more, but not if the Qs start to break under 274 support. And the fixed index must also be sliding. So this is a day of digestion.